We worked through a number of examples of calculating dispersion by hand, and now I'm going to show you how to do them using a spreadsheet. I like using a spreadsheet because it gives me more confidence in my results. It's easier to find my errors, and I don't have to worry about plugging all the numbers into my calculator because I can save my spreadsheet and come back to it anytime I want. Here I've entered the data already for the religious identity variable that we used in the other examples. I'm going to create two columns. One column will have the proportion in it. And to do that, I need the sum of these numbers. And I'm just going to go to my summation function over here. And then click Enter. So 916 plus 444 plus 28 plus 387 is 1,775. Now that I've calculated the total number of cases, I can go ahead and use a formula to calculate the proportion in each category, the Protestants, uh, Catholics, and so forth. I start my formula by typing equals, and then I'm going to use my cursor key and just slide over here to the 916, and then I'm going to say I'm going to divide that, and I'm going to move my cursor down here to cell B6, and you can see up in, the, uh, in my cell up top, it's uh, the orange color is B6, but I'm going to do something now to create a, per a permanent location address, an absolute address, not a relative address. And I do that by hitting the F4 key, which goes ahead and inserts those two dollar signs, one before the B and one before the 6. I could have typed those in as well. And then I hit Enter, and I get my value. So you can see and there's lots of decimal places here. It's uh, way more precision than we need, but I'm just going to leave it for the time being. When I copy this formula now, and in Windows I do this by highlighting the cell and hitting Control-C, I just slide down and now I hold down the shift key and highlight this range and then control V to paste. I get all of my proportions. If I hadn't used the absolute address, this cell right here would attempt to divide by the contents of this cell. And then this cell would attempt to divide by the contents of that cell and so forth. That that location without the dollar signs is a relative address, not an absolute address. Uh, we can go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And um, let's do this to two decimal places and close that down a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now my variation ratio is simply 1 minus the proportion of cases in the modal category. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my formula, which is 1 minus, and just, whoops. So now that I didn't take, so it's equals 1 minus and value, and I get a value of approximately 0.48. My diversity index requires that I calculate these proportions squared and sum them. So I'm going to, if I label this column P for proportion, I'll label this column P2. For proportion squared, and again I'm just going to use a formula. Equal starts my formula, I point, point to the value I want squared, and then I use this up arrow key, which is shift 6 on my keyboard, and hit 2 to square it, and then I'm just going to copy this. Now you can see these numbers are, some of them are kind of small, so just to demonstrate Let's go ahead and make this accurate to four decimal places so we see a little bit more. And I've already highlighted the range here. Let me highlight it again. And I'm going to come over to my summation function and get 0.38. And our diversity index now is equal to 1 minus, I forgot to, forgot to type the equal sign. that value. It's approximately 0.62. The interquartile variation uses that diversity index, the 0.62, but it weights it by k divided by k minus 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter my formula 4 slash 3, so there's the weight, and I'm going to multiply that by the value of this cell and hit enter. 
and there's my value. Variation ratio, 0.48. Diversity index, 0.62. Interquartile variation, 0.83, my preferred measure. I'm just going to come over now and slide to the next workbook to show you the same information. I've organized it a little bit differently so I could also show um, the frequency histogram in this window. And you can see this would be a great graphic to turn in with a paper along with these particular statistics or primarily the IQV. Here I've entered the data already for the number of children for these 25 respondents. And we're going to calculate the variance and then the standard deviation. And then I'm going to show you another way to use functions to be able to do that that are built right into the Google Docs spreadsheet. The first thing we need is the average of these numbers. This is a great function in your spreadsheet. I've highlighted all the, the children from 0 to 7, the number of children. I come over here to my summation sign and click on it for functions. I'll take the average function and enter. And I find out that the arithmetic mean of these 25 numbers is 1.96. Now I can go ahead and start calculating what I need for my variance, which is going to be, which remember is y minus y bar squared. So it's y minus y bar. And I'm going to use the same trick I used before. Hit F4 to turn this into an absolute address, not a relative address. And then I'm going to square this number. So Shift 6 so that I get that up arrow or the caret and square and hit Enter. I can now copy this formula. So I highlight the cell, Control C. Highlight the range I want to copy to, control V, and there's all my numbers. And I need the sum of these numbers. So I highlight the range, and I come over here and just click on sum and enter. So there's the numerator for my variance. I'm just going to come up here and type in var equals. And it's going to be equal to, my formula will be, 79.96 divided by n minus 1 or 24. My standard deviation is the square root of that number, so I'll use a formula again. And I'm going to raise that value, the 3.206, to the 1 half power, raise it to the 0.5 power. And there's my standard deviation. Now, there are functions built in to the Google Docs to do this automatically for you. And let me show them to you. Our variance is equal to start a formula using the equal signs V, A, R. And notice it's showing me all the functions that begin with V, A, R. I want the first one. When I get to here, I can just come and highlight the numbers that I'm interested in. And you can see I get the same value I got before. And there's also a function for the standard deviation, STDEV. Again, I'll highlight these numbers. and get my value there. Now I'll clean this up a little bit. We probably can use these two, two decimals and close that down a little bit. And so here we have in this range up here our variance and our standard deviation. Very easy to calculate with a spreadsheet, easy to check for errors, and now you've learned how to use some of these functions. There's a lot of statistical functions built into these spreadsheets. They're a real good shortcut, so you don't have to go to all the work that we did on the left and all these formulas and copying to calculate these values. You can go right to your spreadsheet and uh, for a range of numbers, calculate the mean, variance, and standard deviation.